Today on Twin Cam, we're going to start working on little Melody here and see if we can get her charging with a new alternator and, of course, a new drive belt. So, this little red Metro hasn't been perfectly well behaved since I got her home a few weeks back. When I went to go and pick her up with a few mates, I knew the, her battery was flat and so we took some jump leads. Uh, we got her going, she started up straight away with the help of a jump from uh, my friend Tom's Metro. Um, and she ran for two or three minutes before we turned her off because she was choking us all to death. Then when we came to fire her back up again, she again wouldn't start, so another jump, got her going, and then the 20 minute drive back to my friend Tom's, she was perfect. I got, her, got back to Tom's, um, left her there for a few hours, and then once I started her, started her up then to drive the five hours back home, again, she started perfectly well, fine. However, that was during the day, a quite a nice day, actually, a day quite like today outside, although I'm stuck in the garage. So all I was using really was the engine and the indicators and the brake lights, really, um, to actually drive her about. Then a few days later, I noticed that when I was going out for a drive late at night, um, and I had the lights on, I had the windscreen wipers on, I had the heated rear window on, I had the heater blower, etc. The charge light was glowing very, very gently. And then she went and destroyed her old battery, which is sat down there. So I put a new battery in her, but I then went and tested the voltage when the car was running once I put the new battery in, and it was only 12.7 volts. So that says to me that the alternator is slightly knackered. So that's what we're going to do today to see if we can actually get it working, at least reliably enough, without possibly breaking another battery, so that I can go and record the reveal video that you lot have already seen. This wasn't something I was envisioning having to do to get Melody to really move once I got her home. The day after our 300 mile journey, I gave her a nice wash and went for a 25 minute drive with a friend. That evening, I was planning on driving her to the pub with a few other friends piling in. But as I went to start her up, that's when the battery failed. My battery charger wouldn't recognise its existence, so I ordered a new one. Once I started her up again, I thought I'd go out for a drive, but it was raining and it was night time. So on went all the accessories, and then we got to see the charge light rear its head. It's more obvious to see with the pulsing indicator, hence why that's on. Once I'd scurried home with no wipers, a misted screen and on the side lights, I hooked up my multimeter. It gave the reading I've already described, and I decided the alternator was shagged. On an A-series, the alternator is located below the spark plugs for cylinders 1 and 2. It's driven by a toothed belt that also runs the water pump located immediately behind it. Before we start, I'm going to move the washer bottle out the way, so you all have a slightly better view of the pulleys. Our first step in removing the alternator is simply to unplug it. The plug is located on the left hand side looking from the front of the car and is held in with a spring clip. Once that's off, our attention can turn to removing the belt. To do this, we need to remove all the belt tension and that's set by the alternator mounting bolts. There are three of these overall, two along the top that take its weight and another in a sliding bracket down below. First, we're to slacken and eventually remove, as we're changing the alternator, the larger bolt to the side. This is where having a new car, of a kind I haven't worked on before, makes itself marvellously clear, as the A-Series engine is ancient and so uses Imperial hardware. As I live in the age of colour television, I have a very limited number of Imperial tools. Thankfully, I do have a suitable socket for the tensioner bolt, but for the pivots, which are next to be loosened, 13mm is close enough to half an inch, right? Once the tension's been taken away, the alternator should swing freely down towards the block and the belt just pull out. Okay. 
Finally, to free the alternator from its home, it's just a case of fully undoing the nuts on the pivots, then it slides off and out of the engine bay. If I can figure out how to get it around the Metro slam panel, that is. The alternator we've just removed has a date stamp identifying it to be from 1994. So Melody either had a new alternator when she was about 7 years old, or she's had a used one fitted at some point since. But this is not the original. When I spin it as well, you can hear the wear in the bearings. I could send this off to be rebuilt, and I might still do that one day, but I thought it more important to get the car back on the road as soon as possible. So I went and bought a shiny new one that's lovely and silent when you spin it. Before fitting it to the car, I first need to swap over that sliding bracket so we can tension the belt. This is held to the alternator body by another non-captive nut and bolt. Once that's moved over to the new one, we should be able to fit it to the car, but it's never that simple. Rather predictably, this alternator doesn't fit. Even with the built-in adjustment that can space out the left-hand pivot bolt, it still doesn't quite line up with the crank and water pump pulleys. It's not that I've been sent the wrong unit or one with a defect, but that unfortunately, I went for a rather cheap alternator. They're just like this, apparently. So, with the use of another little spacer, it'll fit fine, but there's another problem. Remember the plug from before? Well, it's too big for the new alternator. The pins are the same, naturally, but the housing is physically too big. Having waited another couple of days for a new plug to arrive, I began de-pinning the old plug. The first two came out as easily as you'd expect, but did the third? Of course not. This is how mangled that plug looked once I'd fished out the final pin. I didn't want to simply cut the wire and repin it as I'd lose some length in the loom, so it was worth the faff, I suppose. With the new plug fitted securely to the wiring loom, the new alternator can finally be threaded around the bodywork and into place. All this is doing so far is highlighting how filthy the engine bay is generally. I promise a full engine bay clean will be coming soon probably before a service, because priorities. The angle at which I bolted the sliding adjustment bracket to the alternator is critical in ensuring it pivots cleanly, so I left it loose until I had the alternator secured to the engine. Now that's tightened up, we can finger tighten the other three bolts before throwing on the new belt. The old one was seriously worn and stretched. In fact, it was adjusted all the way and still wasn't quite tight enough, so this was something I'd ordered before I noticed the car wasn't charging properly. With the belt threaded correctly around all three pulleys, the alternator itself can be adjusted to apply tension on the belt. With that, a socket on the adjusting nut holds it in place so I can tighten up the pivots. The belt will have to be retentioned in a couple of days once she's been driven, but it'll do for now. Once the new plug is loosely fitted, upside down into the side of the alternator, because quality, we can reconnect the battery. Now it's time to start the engine, hope nothing catches fire, and more importantly, hope that Melody begins charging her battery. Fourteen point six three volts. That's a lot higher than it was before, which means I'm going to guess it's worked. No charge light. Sounds good. 
Well, I'm pretty happy with that, and it'll let me really get a feel for Melody on the local lanes, and then go and film that reveal video that you all saw last week. There will be more Melody content coming very soon as we have a look over the car in greater detail to see what kind of problems we might have to deal with in the near future. But until then, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click like and subscribe to Twincam as well. I'm forever indebted to my wonderful Patreon supporters, so if you'd like to support me that way, then please do follow the link in the description. And I'll have more videos coming along soon.